me and a few of my friends um, got together, and we decided to go to the movies one night. I will never forget this night as long as I live. January 31st, 2015. We go to see The Wedding Ringer. That was the movie. It was Josh Gad, uh, Kaylee Cuoco, I think that's her name. I think Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart was in it, and, uh, you know, a couple of other stars. <clears throat> you know, it was, a, it was a decent movie. Before I left to go to the movies, I saw that a number that I hadn't recognized was, was calling my phone. And at first, when I get an unrecognized number, I just, I just, I don't, I don't answer. My phone rang again, didn't answer again. My phone rang for a third time. This time I pick up the phone and I'm like, hello. It was Christiana. She says, hey, and I recognized her voice immediately. She says, hey, do you have time to talk? I said, no, I'm about to go to the movies. And I hung up on her. So we, 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 we go to the movies, we hit the movies. You know, we go see the wedding ringer and we're outside, you know, smoking a cigarette uh, right outside the movie theater. And Christiana's mother, Christiana's mother calls me. Her mother called me. Now, um, so Christiana's mother called me and I was always very respectful of her. Um, always, always respectful. We had, you know, it was as good a relationship, I suppose, as you could have with your, with your girlfriend's mother, I suppose. But I said, Hey Carmen, what's going on? And she says to me, uh, well, Christiana tried to call you a little earlier. Did she get a hold of you? I said, no, I lied to her. I said, no, she didn't. She says, all right, well, Christiana's in the hospital. And I'm like, okay, what for? Stage four pancreatic cancer. She had a few days, guys. A few days. A few days. And so at that moment, I jumped on a plane. Jumped on a plane. Um, hmm. It's a little tough to talk about. It's a little tough to talk about because, you know, it was it was a while back, but, you know, it's still... Anyway, so so I jump on a plane, um, fly to L.A. Her, her entire family, Jesus Christ, her entire family was from East L.A. Um, dude, East L.A., they were, dude, they were a rough and tumble group of Mexicans. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with East L.A., um, uh, it's it was it was her her family, not her mom or her dad, but her dude, her brothers, her cousins, they all they were all a part of that life. They were all a part of that life, and so, and so I get there, and you know she looks just fine. She didn't look like she was emaciated or anything. Um, they didn't obviously she hadn't started chemo because it was just inoperable, and so. Um, yeah, Level Up Man says, "Ah, oh, damn, I uh, triggered that story. I recall this story now. My, no, no, that's all right, man. That's all right. So uh, so what we did is, um, you know, we convinced the hospital staff to get, us a, to get us a bed that was for bigger obese people so that I could sleep in the bed with her. And, um, and so, you know, we're, you know, at, at this time, like, I'm, I don't, I mean, I don't know what's going through my head because the last time I talked to this girl was when I aired her out and dumped her. Yet here she is on her deathbed. And um, and so she says, you know what? She says, I have an idea. I said, okay. She says, let's get married. I didn't hesitate. Didn't hesitate. I said, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Right? So a few hours later, um, we actually got married in the, uh, in the hospital chapel. It was very, very, it's, I don't know if you guys have ever been to a hospital chapel. They're always very, very small. There's a pulpit up front. There's three or four pews on either side. You've got the cross and all that stuff. So we had a, you know, we had a, um, uh, we had a, we had a, uh, a Catholic ceremony and uh, neither one of us was dressed up, but you know, her father Petroza was there and she walked down the aisle, you know, arm in arm. He gave her away. She had her, she had her IV bag with her, um, as she, you know, walked down the aisle and dude, she, she was happy as hell. 
And so we had our ceremony, and uh, we were officially slash unofficially husband and wife. You know, uh, you know, we uh, we signed the mar- we signed the marriage certificate, but I don't remember ever turning it in. I actually remember seeing it, you know, after everything happened. And so, so we get married. She's the happiest person in the world. She makes the hospital staff change everything to Christiana Vera Hopkins. Like everything, like her bag, her IV bags, all of her, like she made them do this. Um, I went to the, I went to the gift store and bought her a cheap little, you know, cheap little ring, I guess. And, uh, and so we're married. So we're married. So, you know, we're laying in bed, you know, talking about the good times. And I did not want to go to sleep because I didn't want to make up. I didn't want to wake up and for her to be gone. And so, dude, I stayed up. I, dude, oh my God, we, I was going to Starbucks, like every other hour going to Starbucks. And, you know, during that time, you know, I apologized to her for, you know, all the pain that I'd caused. And, um, you know, and she forgave me, you know, she said she forgave me. Um, but I was like, at that point, I really was sorry. Like, I was really, really sorry. I was like, look, I'm so sorry, man. Like, I'm sorry I cheated on you. You know, I mean, I, I mean, that's just what I, I mean, I, I just, I, and I really was sorry at that point in time. I never was sorry. I never had any guilty feelings about it, but I did then. And I was the first person that, you know, so anyway, um, you know, we're, we're drinking Starbucks or I'm drink. Well, you know, I think she had a, I think she had a couple of drinks or whatever. And, um, and so finally, you know, I said, like, you know what, let me, let me lay my head down you know, for an hour or so. I don't know, it was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, whatever the case may be. And uh, I laid my head down. I was probably, I don't know, I was probably asleep for a couple hours. And um, I was waken, I was waken up uh, by her mother. And when I opened my eyes, uh, her uh, Carmen and Petroza, um, her, uh, uh, her, main, her main doctor, her oncologist, and her her bed nurse was there and you know, just the looks on their faces. I knew, I knew that she, I knew that she was gone. I knew that she was gone. And, um, that was tough. That was tough. Um, to have, because dude, Christiana, she treated me great. She did. She treated me great. She was nice. She was dude. She was fit, feminine, friendly, faithful. I assume she was literally everything I wanted and needed her to be like, you know, I don't think I fell in love with her, but I, I felt very strongly for her. And so, um, and so, um, and so her funeral was a couple days later. I stayed there. Um, I stayed, I, I was, uh, I was in a hotel at, or I had a hotel room in Santa Monica. I think I used it for one day cause I was always at the hospital. And, um, and so, you know, I go to the funeral and that's when I discovered like who and what her family like was, um, I get there and guys, it was a dude, they were all flamed up. Like every one of her distant relatives, cousins, uncles, brothers, Half brothers, they were all flame. They were all in red. They were bloods. They were bloods, and I'm talking. And guys, I'm talking like these are fucking G's. I'm talking teardrop tattoos, face tattoos. You know, dude, they're, they're dude. They're tat. They're, they're so many tattoos. They look like a dollar bill, but they were all cool with me. They all knew who I was. They all know who I was. And several of them's like, hey man, you know, they dap me up. They're like, hey, thanks for what you did for our little cousin. Thanks for what you did for my little sister, man. You know, she talked about you all the time. She never. Like, she never said a bad word about me. You know what I mean? And I didn't treat her like garbage. I I didn't yell at her. I didn't curse at her. But, you know, I ran around on her and I, you know, I did quite a bit. And she never, dude, and she never told. And that's really what I was afraid of. I was like, dude. If this chick told her family, like, what I've done, it was just going to be awkward. But no, several of them were like, hey, man, like, she said she loved you. She said you were the one, blah, 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 blah. And um, and so that was that was very cool. And oh, boy. And her mother 
gave me a handwritten letter that she wrote to me before she called. Uh, Devin actually, Devin actually, um, I think Devin knows where the letter is. I don't know where it's at, but Devin has read it. She's seen it. Um, but here's what the letter said. Actually, it's, it's, so this is an email with the letter word for word. This is from Carmen, her mother. Uh, and so the email says, and she sent this to me. Oh my God. She sent this to me on February the 15th. I'm sorry, February 7th. So she gave me the letter at the funeral and then sent me the letter because there was a link she wanted me to see. So anyway, um, the letter says, my dearest Alex, if you are reading this, it means I'm in heaven. I hope to God I will have seen you before then. I want to let you know how much I love you. You're my everything, and I hope I was able to show you that my love for you was real. I know I pulled some pretty stupid stunts, but I swear to you, and I, uh, but I swear to you, I never meant to hurt you. I just wanted us to be together, and I went about it the wrong way, and for that, I am truly sorry. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me and understand that uh, that only I that I that I oh I guess that's a typo that only I did only I did those things to be with you. <sighs> the last couple of years between us have been like a roller coaster, and we've certainly had our ups and downs. But I wouldn't trade one day of it for the world. I fell hopelessly in love with you uh, the night we met uh, in Vegas at the party in Vegas, and my feelings have never wavered or changed since. <laughs> I remember that mischievous, cocky grin you had on your face when you introduced yourself at Geo's party. You were such an ass that night, LOL. But and she says, but I saw through the facade, even though you were the life of the party and cracking jokes. And then in parentheses, she says, I still remember you talking shit about my hair, LOL. When I looked into your eyes, I could see, I could see a warm, kind gentleman who bared the scars of past heartbreak. I wanted to be the girl who made you believe in love again, and I hope I accomplished that on some level. My friends told me I was crazy for loving you. They called me young and dumb, but I knew better. I knew that I had found the man I want to, wanted to spend the rest of my life with. You, oh boy. You are the one, Alex, and I know and feel it in my heart. I forgive you a thousand... Boy, this was before she called me. She says, I forgive you a thousand percent for everything, so please don't beat yourself up or feel guilty. I'm a big girl, and I knew what I was doing, and I don't regret taking you back ever. I'd go through a thousand heartbreaks with you to sleep next to you and feel the self-crushing love between us. And please tell Jenny and Martha I'm sorry for the mean things I said to them. <laughs> and I know I have no right to say this because I was the reason for it, but if you can, you should get your vasectomy reversed. I don't care what you say or think. I know that you would make a wonderful father because I've seen how you are with children. Just think about it at least. I don't want this to change you. I want you to still be... I want you to still be who you are with just one exception. If you meet someone, <clears throat> if you meet someone you truly care about, don't let her go. I know you're still going to be a player and that's perfectly okay because most women out here aren't really worth getting into a relationship with. But if you do meet someone, give them the same privilege you gave me. Even though things between us then didn't end the way I would have liked, I still love you with all my, she's supposed to put heart, and I pray that you live a long and healthy life. I don't regret the time we had together. Even though we had our ups and downs, we had a lot more ups than downs. Oh, man. There is a song I would like you to listen to that embodies the way I feel about you. I can't put a link on a piece of paper, LOL, but my mom has it, and she will send it to you when you ask her. I love you, ev I love you with every fiber of my being, Edwin Alexander Hopkins Jr., and I will love you even in death. I will wait for you in heaven where we can finally love each other for eternity until then my love love christiana she said uh that is everything she so then her mother put that is everything she writes word she her mother spoke good english but she didn't write it so great this is everything she writes words for words it took long uh time to copy it but i know i know want read it I also include pictures she want you to have that I will scrapbook and send you this. It, it, anyway, um, so then at the end, she says, 
<clears throat> she says, enclosed in the letter, enclosed in, oh boy. She says, enclosed in this is a gift I would like you to have. You do not have to wear it, but if you ever loved me at all, even a little bit, I would greatly appreciate if you would wear it in remembrance of me. That, gentlemen, <clears throat> the gift that Christiana talked about was this. My, my handcuff, um, my handcuff necklace. Now I've replaced, I've replaced the chain. I've replaced the chain with something that's a little more sturdy, but, but the handcuff necklace that I've been wearing all these years are from her. I went on a pretty, um, I went on a pretty wicked bender after that, if you can imagine. Um, like, dude, oh my God, I was, I was drinking literally every, it was, it was bad, man. It was bad. I was hurt. I was depressed. I was, I was, I felt guilty. Like there's this all, like all sorts of things, all sorts of things going on, man. It really, really was. Um, I was get, dude, I was getting into more fights. <sighs> then of course, November of that same year, um, that's when I broke the guy's face over pizza you know, my attorney probably had naked pictures of the judge, and that's the reason I'm probably free today. Who knows? I don't know. Dude, to this day, I don't know how Paul got me out of that. I don't know how Paul got me out of that. I really don't. But, but, um, but that's that's um, that's what happened, guys. That's what happened. And you know, the the the, the funny thing is, man, is the weird thing about that story. The weird thing about that whole situation is that I think to myself, would I have loved her if she had never gotten sick or passed? And the answer was no. The answer is no. Like if she had never gotten, you know, pancreatic cancer, I mean, I would have never seen her again, you know? Yeah. And again, Christiana was fucking gorgeous. She was fucking beautiful. Oh, my God. She was. Oh, my God. She was exquisite, man. She really was. She she had a sweet disposition, you know. I mean, she I mean obviously she spoke fluent Spanish, and so when we used to go places, she used to translate and all that for me. I'd be like, tell them da 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 da, da and she would just do it. Um, but um, you know, she was a good girl. She really was. I just I was just not ready to settle down at that point. I really wasn't. I really wasn't. This is this is nine years ago, man. I wasn't ready. Like I had, dude, I had just acquired my black belt and women. I was, I still wanted to, I still wanted to go and enter into tournaments and all that. But, um, I think the reason I wear it is because it's still, it, it's a reminder of me that, yeah, I am human, right? Like I am human. Like I, you know, okay, I'm captain red pill and this and that and the other, but guys, like, I'm not, I'm not a robot. I'm not a machine, you know, like I have emotions. I was sad. I was hurt. I felt guilty. You know, a lot of guys in this community like to pretend that they're just these ironclad, unbreakable. No, nah, man. No, of course not. Dude, Andrew Tate, Justin Waller, Myron Gaines, dude, they got hopes and fears just like all the rest of us. Man, they've got their they've got their painful origin stories just like the rest of us. Andrew Tate's not unbreakable. Right? Justin Waller's not unbreakable. Myron, he's not unbreakable. None of those guys are. You know? None of those guys are. Um, I remember when Myron on the um, uh, on the Saucecast uh, live show talked about how his grandmother died. You know, he went out on the balcony, he shed some tears, and that was that. Like that's how this goes. That's how this goes. But um, yeah, I try to share these. I try to share these stories with you guys just so that you guys can get sort of a glimpse into 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 who I am as a person. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, at this point, my life is literally an open book. You guys know just about everything about me. You guys know about my criminal record and this and that and the third. And there, I mean, all, all of my information has been, I've been doxxed by everybody, you know? Um, but even though somebody doxxes you and tries to lie about you, they still don't know you, you know? And I'm not going to sit here and try and virtue signal and say, well, I'm a good guy because I did X, Y, and Z. Nah, that's, that's not what it was, man. That's not what it was. The reason I married her is because it was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do. The girl obviously loved me. And I mean, don't get me wrong, man. Like what she tried to do to, when she tried to baby trap me, that was some fucked up shit. 
That was some fucked up shit because had she succeeded, had she succeeded, that whole situation would have been fucked up. That, oh, I can't even, like, like if she, like if she baby traps me and then dies, now I'm a sink. Oh my God. So, so, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's that story.